How's it going guys and welcome back to Quentin and the Gun Guy. Today we are doing a flashlight review. This review is literally my shortest review that I've ever done or testing that I've ever done with a flashlight. And we are doing the Trustfire T21R today. So the challenge was that I need to do a review or do a test within a week and it's been a week I've put this little flashlight through the ringer. <laughs> it's taken a beating. So if you follow me on social media, you know that I've, I've done quite a few tests. Five days of solid testing. I didn't give this flashlight a break. Um, just I just went solidly trying to get this to fail. And guess what? It didn't. It's still going strong. This was sent to me by Torch SA. Uh, this is the Transvar T21R as you as you've seen already. To see what happened, uh, what I did, if you don't follow me on social media. But first, let's take a closer look so you can see the flashlight up close. Look, this is the Transvar T21R as you've seen already and we discussed. 2600 lumens, it's a three year warranty from Transvar. Uh, 2700 battery which is absolutely brilliant. Um, really like the 21700 batteries. That's the box. This is what you get in the box. You get a Type-C USB charger, you get a manual, you get a lanyard, and you get an extra O-ring to seal it with. What everyone wants to see is the actual flashlight. So just for size comparison, this is the T11R, um, still one of my favorite EDC flashlights. See the size difference? It's only slight, it's not a huge difference. Compare that to the MC3, then there's a slight difference as well. It's almost like you can just add on the little tail switch length uh, to make the MC3 the same size as, as the T21R. Okay, so this is the flashlight. I can, as you can see, it's a two button control system with a, got a tail switch and a front switch to cycle it through the modes. Really, really nice. Um, you'll see the beam shot in a bit. Really nice, it fits nicely in hand. Absolutely love the feel of this little flashlight. The grip is slightly different to anything else that the Trustfire is doing right now. So this is the grip of the MC3, it's close to the grip of the T11R. Very, it's like a, almost like you get on a, like those wooden rifles, um, that, that type of grip. This is just a, just a straight grip just across the flashlight. Really, really nice. As you can see, it's taken a bit of a beating. It has seen better, day, better days. Type-C USB charger, um, as you've seen already, it's a two button, two button switch, and this is your pocket clip. Pocket clip is non-reversible, so there's only one way that you can carry it, and that's with the, the bezel up. The same with your MC3, basically. So this is where you can see is the similar, similarity. Sorry if my voice cuts out a bit, but I really want to bring you guys this review. So let's go to beam shots. Okay, beam shots. This is five meters. You can't really see it on camera, but that's a, that's two lumens. It can maintain that for 52 days, which is freaking insane. Next up is 100 lumens. That's going to be for 29 hours, 425 lumens for 6.3 hours, turbo mode 2,600 lumens. That's going to go for 200, 203 minutes. This is five meters. Moving on, but further distances out, the tree there, that's about, I think that's about 20 meters. The wall is uh, 30 meters. Further on, 35 meters to that wall there. Far distance there by the, uh, by, my, by my gate light, that, uh, that's close to about 40 meters. As you can see, not a super pronounced hotspot, um, but yeah, really nice light. Great light for identification, so yeah, proper. Okay, so that was the beam shots. As you guys know that if something says tactical, I'm going to try and break it. And I really did try and break it, within reason, of course. Look, I can break it, probably. Um, but I need to try and replicate what you might put this flashlight through. So I wanna use a couple of different methods just to see if this flashlight is going to survive a beating that you are going to put it through. 
in everyday use. So let's just quickly discuss the word tactical again. So with tactical, I want a certain degree of quality from a flashlight. I want a certain degree of survivability and features as well. Features like a tail switch, features like an aggressive bezel. I would have preferred a slightly more aggressive bezel as well. And then of course, I want some degree of adjustability because you don't always want to go at full power when you're doing something that you might not want to give away your position. Determine mode to work on something that's really close by to you. Um, yeah, I didn't show you guys how, how I can take the battery out. So you just screw off the tail cap and the 21700 battery just pops out. Really cool. Oh. I think I messed up this battery as well. Okay, that's pretty cool. I've got a... <laughs> Wow, I've got a certain knack for messing up the batteries. See that little pole there has been beaten into into the battery. So that that that's actually happened before with my T11R as well. Let me show you guys as well. So see that battery there? I don't know if you can see on camera. See, that's been that's taken a beating as well. Hit been hit into the battery. It's still making contact. It's still working. I don't know how, like the T21R is as well. R is as well. <laughs> it does make sense. Okay. Anyway, moving on. So this is the part where I go through things that I like and then maybe things that I don't like. Uh, what I like about this is this is aircraft grade aluminium, hot anodizing, so it's going to be proper, it's going to be strong. Maximum Candela said it pushes out 12,996, which is quite a bit, but it's not that much. Um, if you look at some of the other flashlights in the 21700 range, as you saw in the beam shots, it's not a super focused beam, it's more like a spread out beam. So this is a lot, it's like an in-betweener between a hotspot and a thrower, which is, uh, which is quite cool. Luminous SST-40 LED, which is a super strong one, which is absolutely brilliant. And then it's, it's a 228 meter throw, IPX8 or IP68, depends on which side you <laughs> which side you see. And then one meter drop tested. So a couple of tests that I did was I threw it into water. couple of times um, also that I bashed it on wood to see if the if the flashlight is going to fail. Now that's probably that what messed up my battery again. Um, after that, I put it into a freezer. I can't remember the, the, the complete sequence. Threw into the freezer overnight in the moonlight mode. It did survive the next morning as well, which is brilliant. Um, I threw it around quite a bit.
so that took a beating as well um so yeah it's, it's been through a couple of tests still surviving oh i drove over i drove over it as well about that's what caused this damage here um, close to the charging port so it's definitely survivable and I've gotten good feedback from um, from guys that's bought this flashlight as well or that's been using this flashlight really nice feedback and everyone really likes it um, it's a nice solid flashlight in hand proper nice tactical use um, it's, it's just really nice it's a good quality flashlight um, there's not much to complain about, um, but I, there's always going to be something to complain about. Things that I don't like about this flashlight, the battery that's, that's taken a beating, um, yeah, I'm not a big fan of that. Uh, but anyway, that's my fault. I would, I would like to see, I don't know if it's possible, just a battery slightly more reinforced at, at that specific point. Um, Yes, a flashlight isn't made for bashing stuff and bashing people. But if it does, if you need to use this in a self-defense scenario, you still want it to work. So I do I do suspect that if I keep on doing that, bash it a couple of times more, I might I might get some failures and get places or get times where it doesn't make complete contact. Now that's not the flashlight's fault, that's just a battery fault. Another thing is the clip that's removable. <clears throat> Sorry, voice. It's removable but it's non-reversible so what i like to do is in all my flashlights that's got a tail switch i like to carry it bezel down so as i take it out of my pocket it's ready to rock and roll where this one is a bit of a pain because you are going to pull it out like that you need to swap it around and then get purchase on your flashlight which is not it's not a major thing but it's just a bit of a pain for me what i do like is as you can see the little lanyard holes and protector for the uh, for the for the switch they've thickened that up quite a bit so as you can see on the t11r it's it just takes a beating it's bent to smithereens it's probably not me yeah it doesn't mean much anymore but this not so much it's still strong it's still solid it's still carrying on it does have a battery indicator as you would expect from your trust fires most of them do, most of them do have battery indicators starts off um at green it goes yellow, it goes orange, and then red, uh, depending on where you are within the battery range. So yeah, this is a really nice little torch, nice little tactical use. Um, and I'm, this is going to my play carrier now. Um, so I'm going to use this for my play carrier. And this is probably going to stay in my EDC. Thing that I saw as well is this is just, this is like borderline for me now, for my small frame as well, because I'm skinny guy. Um, this is borderline for me on the comfort level now um, to carry a flashlight. Um, it's just as thick as the MC3 and it's slightly longer as well. So very much a possibility to carry this. I did carry this comfortably for the week that I used it and abused it. Um, yeah, I just put it to, to good use, I would say. Not really torture testing, just good use. But the T11R is still a more comfortable flashlight for me to carry um what i thought about and what i said in one of my videos is if i can get the features of the mc3 and the tlm together then that's going to give me this so trust fire actually listened and we got what we wished for we get the features of the mc3 but again with a tail switch which is absolutely brilliant Anyway, guys, that's just my quick thoughts. And as you can hear, my voice isn't lack, but I'm still committed to bringing you guys content. So you can actually see that I reviewed this within a week and abused it to give you guys an honest opinion. So I squeezed, uh, I usually do about one month to two months worth of testing before I do a review. And I promise you, I really put this through its paces um, to try and get a failure. And as you guys saw in the other videos as well, I almost did. No, I didn't. I didn't get a failure. I didn't even get close. It's just, it's just super survivable, and it's just carrying on. Anyway, guys, good to see you again. I'll see you um, for one of my deep thinking videos again.
Yeah. Oh yeah, this goes for 1,499 Rand, which is an absolute bargain. One fire for a tactical flashlight. You won't get that anywhere else with that kind of survivability. See you next, next review and next video. Cheers guys.